We're back with Five Guys in a Bible, and it is certainly good to be with you today. We thank you for watching us, and uh, we hope that you will, you know, just from the beginning, give us the big thumbs up, the big like, and uh, share us away uh, as well. So, with that in mind, now that we've got that out of the way, um, let's get on with the question at hand today, which is, uh, it, it came to us as a question actually during the big lotto, the big Powerball, um, and that was basically a question considering gambling. Is gambling a sin? Is buying a lottery ticket a sin? Playing poker with my family and friends a sin? That kind of thing. Where do we draw a limit? Is there a limit? What can we do? So we're going to start with Jason Schultz. So Jason? Let's take it away. Well, where you draw the limits, what kind of poker you like to play. I'm used to no limit. I mean, that's, no. Um, what if I told you, just imagine for a second, what if I told you I sat down with one of my friends, managed to take several hundred dollars of his money by misleading and outright lying to him? Uh, because that's a pretty good description of playing poker, Right. Um, unless the story is I lost uh, several hundred dollars because my friend misled and outright lied to me. Um, when I got this question, I really debated whether or not to tell the story about my grandpa um, really quick because I'm usually not the story guy. When I was a kid, I heard about poker. I wanted to learn how to play. I, I pestered my grandpa about it constantly <clears throat> until finally – he said, okay, I, I will teach you how to play poker. So he taught me the rules, um, how it works. We played five-card draw. He, you know, he pulled out a, a bucket of change, gave me about $5 in change. He took some change. We played over the course of about 15 minutes. He took all my money. And when he was done, he said, now, I want you to know I was cheating you. And he showed me how. He had a – he had a um, – uh, metal uh, cigarette lighter that he used that he was passing the cards over the top of so he saw what every card was. So I said, well, that's not fair. You know, give me all the money back. So he went and all that. This time he took all the money from me in about half as much time. And I said, well, how were you cheating me? He says, I wasn't cheating you that time. And that's why you should never play poker. Fair enough. That, that, a lesson learned. Right? Um <clears throat> I guess the reason I'm storytelling is because it's really hard to find a thou shalt not gamble, thou shalt not play the lottery passage of Scripture. Um, it's just not stated explicitly in Scripture that way. Now, maybe some of these guys are going to find some Scripture and make really good application that I'll be happy with. But, um, you know, the, the closest I could come is Proverbs 13, 11, which talks about Wealth gotten by vanity, and in some versions there say wealth gotten hastily or wealth gotten by fraud. You know, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathers by labor shall increase. Right, and so that is that is the get rich quick idea of playing, you know, of gambling, you know, playing the lottery. It's sort of in opposition to the diligent work called for in Scripture, which, by the way, studies have shown that bankruptcy rates for lottery winners actually increase dramatically. You know, the money does diminish somehow. Um, with with gambling, I think you, you can't take a hard stand and say, well, the scripture specifically says you can't gamble. You can't do those things. But I, I think there's some good arguments to be made about the consequences of gambling, right? Um cities that have casinos start up, sees crime go up. Um, gambling often leads to gambling addiction. You know, things like the lottery, it ends up pandering to poor people, and they don't have the money to spend on those things, right? And, um, you know, they always defend it by saying the money's going to go to fund schools. Well, I was a newspaper reporter for many years and dealt with lots of school districts, and I can assure you, in Illinois at least, any money that was funneled from, funneled from the lottery in the schools was just a replacement of money getting funneled out of schools for something else, right? They didn't see any net gain there. I, I don't see any good that, that comes out of 
gambling, lottery, that kind of thing. But I can't give a hard and fast, here's where the scripture says you can't do it. You know? So use wisdom, be a good steward of your money. Don't do anything that you can't afford to lose. And I guess that's about all I have to say about it. And that's going to take us to Todd Bryant. Todd, you take it away. I'm always, always scared when Jason and I agree. So it's like some they were in the twilight zone or something. Um, he doesn't like it when I say that. He's actually called me and said, please don't say that anymore. So I'm almost like, me and Jason actually agree on that. Um, I, the, the scripture really does not give a thou shalt not gamble, uh, or if you're in a newer version, you shall not gamble. It doesn't say anything like that. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people gamble and don't even really realize it. I, I know people that are hardcore fast against lotteries and gambling, but they don't mind buying a $5 raffle ticket to win a TV or uh, something like that. I, I, I've you know, play golf before me and a buddy go play golf. And he said, I tell you what, if I win the front nine, um, you know, I'll, you can buy me a Coca-Cola at the, you know, at the turn. And if you win the front nine, I'll buy you a Coca-Cola at the turn. You know, that's just friendly bit between people. And I've never actually won a Coca-Cola. Of course, I knew going into that, that I'd be the one buying. I, I've got a friend of mine who, by the way, is the cheapest person. That I know. This is an honest, this is a true story. Every Friday, he goes by uh, the credit union and pulls out three or four rolls of nickels. And he get, gets together with his buddy on Friday night. And he, he plays nickel poker. He's, ne he's never out more than about six bucks. It's hard for me to say that that's sinful when I can spend more than that on the way home at Taco Bell. You know, now I guess the argument could be said that well, you're getting something for that. Well, I, if I go to the movies and spend six dollars, then I've only bought a drink, and I'm getting nothing for, really for that. I mean, there's, you know, you, we all waste money. We, we six dollars is hard to you know rob your family. There, there's a vast difference between taking ten thousand dollars to Las Vegas and losing it and a guy getting together with three rolls of nickels on Friday night and he knows his limit and he never goes past that. I I think we're asking the wrong question. My opinion. I, I think sometimes we look for this tell me if it's wrong or right issue. That's the way we seem to look at things in Christianity today. Look, there's liberty in Jesus. And, and we need to see that. There's not liberty to sin. If the Bible says something is specifically wrong, then it's wrong. But where the Bible leaves a gray area, we have liberty in Christ. We need to be asking a different question, not is it okay to gamble, but why do you? That's the question that I, I think we should ask. First Timothy 6 says, godliness with contentment is great gain. Now, how does that how does that, you know, go against gambling? I, I think that's the question we need to ask. He goes on and says, for we brought nothing into the world and we can't, we cannot take anything out of the world. You know, how does that measure up that, that I want to go buy a lottery ticket so I win, you know, $1.3 billion? By the way, it's sad that we live in a society where people won't buy a lottery ticket at $20 million, but once it gets up over, you know, a billion, there that's worth driving three hours to the next state to buy a lottery ticket over. That tells you the state of our um, society. He goes on and says, but if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. We're not asking the right question. It's not, a, it's not about is gambling okay. It's about why do you want to gamble? Then he says in verse 9, 1 Timothy 6, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. So why why do you want to why do you want to be rich? That's the question. You know, a a guy getting together with his friends on Saturday night knowing he's not going to lose more than six dollars, that's not a big issue. But if you if your desire is to hit it rich and play it, you know, Get billions of dollars. If you read First Timothy six, how can you feel that? I mean, why would you want to? It, it's a completely opposed to this. The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and it is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. 
So I, I, it's not is gambling legal. It's why do you want to do it? I and mean, if you read that passage, I just don't see how anybody would want to hit it rich. That scares me right there from wanting to be rich and seeking riches. So, yeah, I, I, th- I just think we're asking the wrong question. That's all I got. All right, that's going to move us to Troy McGahan, number three. Well, Todd, thank you for taking all the scriptures. I'm just kidding. Uh, I was going to use 1 Timothy chapter 6, but did a really good job with that. Hebrews chapter 13 um, and verse 5, the Bible says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Um, I like what you said about the fact that we're asking their own question. I'll tell you, I'll take a little bit of a different perspective with this. I don't do anything like that because I don't trust me. I know what I enjoy. I know the things that I struggle with. It's like this. Some people might have no problem whatsoever getting together with their buddies, playing for five dollars, you know, nickels for poker and so forth, and then do that and go home at night. I don't do it for two reasons. Number one, I don't trust me. Number two, I don't want to set the example before my son as something that that would be enjoyable to because I don't know that he would be able to say no or whatever to it as well. I think at the end of the day, every man will have to give an account before the Lord. Every man knows his limits, like myself. I don't go to buffets hardly ever. You know why? Because when I go to a buffet, I am going to wear that puppy out. They're going to come to me and say, no more, go home, you're done. I try to stay away from it. Why? Because I like food. Well, if I go somewhere and I enjoy anything that's competitive, something like that for me, gambling, whether it be card playing, whatever, I try to stay away from it because I know my competitive juices get flowing and it just wouldn't be a good idea for me. So what I try to do is follow what it says there in Hebrews 13. Be content with what I have. Be thankful for what God has provided and try to be a good steward with what God has given me as well. If I can do that, I I think then in my mind and so forth, gambling or anything like that is something I don't need to be doing. So I'm going to stop with there and pass it on. All right. That brings things to me. So, hmm, question is, uh, what, how, I guess so far, really, I just agree with everything that's been said. Um, I will say this. I'll kind of add my two cents in with uh, things. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans 14 and verse 23, it says, in the last part of that clause, it says, for whatsoever is not a faith is sin. And this is the way I feel about it. If, if your conscience is telling you that it is sinful, it's Something you ought to stay away from. But, you know, if, if it doesn't bother you, if there's no guilt and and uh, playing the, the $6 hand or whatever it is, then it's probably not not going to be a big hurt to you. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see that as, as a big problem. Uh, there is a problem, of course, though, when, when people take away from their family's needs and, uh, you know, get addicted to it. Uh, of course, and you know they're not able to to pay their rent, pay their pay their mortgages, you know those kinds of things. That, yeah, that that's being unwise with your money, being un, uh, you know unkind to your family. There's all kinds of reasons that that's sinful. But uh, again, that that's one of those things where you know a lot of things are not sinful for us when it's something done in moderation, but in excess. You know, the brother was just mentioning going uh, into a a you know, a, a buffet and eating too much. Well, you know, is it okay to eat? Yeah. Is it wrong to eat too much? Yes. Um, and and we could give other examples that we don't want to get into tonight as, as well because that would lead to other questions probably. But um, at, at the same time, you know, uh, moderation is probably the key. Um, I don't 
think it's necessarily a wise thing to do. But at, at the same time, I can't point to any scripture to say it's uh, certainly a, a sin. And I, I know a lot of people say, well, they gambled for, you know, the clothing of Christ under the cross. Well, you know, playing, basic, casting lots and basically playing one potato, two potato to see who the winner is, is, is not gambling. There's, there's a difference there in, in who, who got it. But uh, and I don't think that's a good example. But that's, that's, that's always a classic example that I, uh, that I always see. Um, people point out, but uh, again, whatever is not a faith is sin. I think stick with that, and you'll be all right. So, with that, I'm going to lead things up to Mark Campbell. I'm sorry, I was looking at a scripture, and I had my I had to go and uh, turn my sound on. Well, let me let me just <clears throat> tell you about from my perspective. You know. Listen, we don't we don't play the lottery. We don't make it a practice of really a lot of times. Oh, oh, the, the church that I was raised in, not raised in, but the Baptist church that I became a member of. I mean, we didn't play raffles. We didn't play scramble. We didn't bet money on golf. I mean, we're teetotalers and totally out. No, don't do it. Okay. Um, and, and my mom was, you know, she is... Um, against all of that too uh, um and, and the way she was raised think about this my my mom was raised they weren't even allowed to play with a deck of cards i mean just runny or solitaire or whatever now my mom's 82 i am the most senior member of the five guys by the way i may not look the oldest but i am <laughs> but anyway my mom's 82 and so in her era they weren't allowed to play with playing cards because it was a sin to play playing card with playing cards it was a sin to my mom and her mother to uh play billiards okay and why was that why did they feel that way um the old saying is evil corrupt or evil com evil communications corrupt good manners evil associations corrupt good manners um that's the reason they wouldn't do those things. It was because of the things that were tied to card playing. Um, a lot of cards were played back then in bar rooms and all of that type of thing. And so all the activities that were associated with the card playing back in those days, okay, we're just going to stay away from the cards. Um, uh, billiards the same way. Um, in, in the state of Kentucky, they've, They've tried to pass the okay to bring casinos into the state of Kentucky, and you get a lot of literature on that. Being the pastor of the church, you know where we get all kinds of literature on that. And, and, and the, thing that they, the thing that they talk about the most is the fact of what is associated with the gambling uh, industry. And most of the time, it's organized crime that's associated with that. And so because of all the things that generally are tied to um, gambling and so forth, like crime rates go up, and most of the time, if you would open up a casino, then there's some other establishments that go in that aren't always uh, the most healthy for a community. And all those things are things that are tied to that. And so even though gambling in and of itself, it may not be sinful, but the other things that are associated with that are why people stand against it. And so, um, you know, I don't play the lottery. I, I played the lottery one time in 1986. I lived in the state of Ohio. I just got out of college. I had a new job. Hey, the Ohio lottery, I'm going to play $5 on the Ohio lottery. I think that was 30 numbers that I got for $5. I think I got about four right out of 30. That was the last $5 I spent on the lottery. Um, but like they've all said, there's no thou shalt not. But again, why do I want to or why would I want to play that? Is it just so that I could be rich? Um, and we know that, that somebody that is uh, that gets rich, generally they don't do well with that. As a matter of fact, they, they talk about a lot of the uh, professional athletes that come from um, poorer families, and then when they become millionaires because of uh, sports, a lot of times they don't, they can't handle it. They don't utilize it well. Um, they don't know how to handle money. 
and so therefore they don't utilize it well. So just playing the lottery and you're going to win $1.3 billion, that wouldn't mean that you were going to be rich. Uh, it may destroy you. Um, so, you know, you need to use discretion when you're doing those type of things. But, but, but I will tell you, Jason told a little personal story, so let me tell a little personal story about what I did. A couple of times I, I took a, a, a group of guys from – uh, the place where I used to work, and we had to go to St. Louis um, for company business, and there was a riverboat there, and I was the company guy, and I had control of all the guys, and I had to drive, and they all said, we want to go to the riverboat, and I'm like, I don't want to go to the riverboat, but they said we needed to go, and I had pressure from a higher up that said I needed to take these guys to the casino, the riverboat, so we went down there, and it was just as I was becoming the pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church. And I thought, I can just see it now. Pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church uh, gets caught on a riverboat in St. Louis, Missouri, and blah, blah, blah. You know, so I was nervous about that. But anyway, nothing happened. But uh, anyway, I have been on one of those before. I wasn't very comfortable while I was there, but I was there. Story number two. A few years back, my daughter was the state champion for the uh, Health Occupational Students of America. And so we had to go to Anaheim, California for the national competitions and we flew into LAX. We had a layover in Las Vegas. Never been to Vegas in my life. My wife says, you know, I'd love to play just one time. I'd love to play a slot machine. And I'm like, oh man, I don't know. So I said, here, Kim, here's what we're going to do. I gave her a $10 roll of quarters. I had two of them, by the way. I gave her a $10 roll of quarters, and I said, "We're gonna. I'll let you play the slot machines. When that $10 roll of quarters is gone, we're gone, okay? We're going to be done. Um, so anyway, we go out there. Didn't even need the $10 roll of quarters because they take cash, and they give you credits and all of this. Kim uses her $10 worth of money up, so I thought, hmm, I'm going to get me $10 worth. After about three three dollars I won twenty five dollars and I said that's it I'm done I'm coming out ahead they said you can't quit now and I said oh yes I can't do I'm quitting now I didn't play anymore so I was there I thought what's ten dollars we're on a vacation you know what's the big deal I'm going to spend more than that on a steak dinner probably or nachos and cheese or whatever so you know I wasn't going to become addicted I did it um I mean I didn't even feel guilty about it um, so I don't make it a practice, but that one time I did partake just because it was fun, you know? And so, uh, you know, I was reading something the other day about what we should do and the opportunities that we have to exercise discretion. And that one thing that Christians ought to do to practice temperance and discretion is there's some places in our life where we ought to put those things into practice. Um, and so that's one of the things that it does here for us. It gives us an opportunity to stretch our spiritual muscles maybe a little bit and practice some temperance and discretion. So anyway, I'm not going to make it a practice of it, but as the others have said, we need to be content with what we have, and there is no thou shalt nots. So with that, I'm going to say uh, I'm thankful that the Lord has brought me along, and I can be content with what I have. And uh Anyway, I'm going to shut up, turn it back over to John. All right. With that, does anybody have anything they want to add to that? Oh, man, we all had bets Jason would have something uh, to add at the end. Just joking. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> God, you're buying the L8, buddy. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for watching. I hope that that's been uh, somewhat informative for you. Uh, again, I like the thing. I like what uh, Todd said. Change the question. That's the better. That's the better question. Is is why would we want it? Uh, right. So with that, we want to say uh, good night, goodbye, whatever it is to you. And again, like us, share us if you would. Help us out. Help a help a poor person, poor family out, and and share us along. And uh, we thank you again for watching. God bless you all. Good night, everybody. See you later.